do want to start with a couple of defections from the LSU program one way or another. We learned of LSU's latest um, we learned of LSU's latest transfer portal defection yesterday. Demarius McGee, the freshman cornerback, is going to enter into the transfer portal. Um, you know, not a guy that had played a ton in his time in Baton Rouge, uh, but is looking elsewhere. Uh, and then just about 20 minutes ago, we learned that Jay Ward is going to uh, enter the NFL draft. We assumed that would happen. He went through senior day festivities and um, could use his COVID year, but it's going to move on. And so you know, those two guys played in the secondary. And I started to think about LSU's secondary as we move into uh, the the coming season, not the bowl game, the coming season. And I think, man, Jay Ward and Demarius McGee are gone. Jark Bernard Converse is very likely to move on. He participated in senior day. Colby Richardson was a grad transfer. He's gone. Makai Garner participated in senior day. Joe Fouché participated in senior day. Todd Harris is moving on. And you start to look at what's coming back. Maybe Radarius Jones comes back. Maybe he doesn't. He was suspended this year. Maybe Seven Banks comes back. Maybe he doesn't. He doesn't have to. He, of course, missed a lot of the season after what happened on the kickoff against Auburn. Um, there have been some indications he's interested in returning, but that's certainly not a, a done deal. And at that point, he won't have played for a couple of seasons. Greg Brooks didn't go through senior day, so maybe he comes back. He doesn't have to. Can move on. Jalen Davis Robinson's a freshman on this team. LaTerrence Welsh is a freshman on this team. Those two guys, you, know, you could see, come back. And then you start to look at safety. Sage Ryan, Matthew Langlois, Jordan Allen, maybe Derek Davis. He didn't play this year and then got thrust into duty as a running back right there at the end. Um, so it becomes more and more evident as you look at what the secondary likely looks at. Again, I don't know what Ray Darius Jones is going to do. I don't know what Seven Banks is going to do. I don't know what Greg Brooks is going to do. You put those guys in. You figure Jalen Davis Robinson, LaTerrence Welsh comes back. You figure Sage Ryan is back. It becomes a big key when you talk about the secondary that Makai Garner thinks about coming back. Now, he went through senior day. So, Brian Kelly told us after that, hey, don't put any stock into that. You know, some guys just want to be with their family, so, you know, whatever. But you go through senior day, I would think that was your last time in Tiger Stadium. But Makai Garner has a decision to make. If he were to come back, that would be big because he's played pretty well. He's got a, a physical body. He's proven himself at this level and, and would be a, a big-time corner for you next year. And then you start to look towards the signing class, and you've got a couple of corners signed that aren't necessarily the elite-level recruits. Maybe they're Jalen Mills, and they're ready to go right out of the shoot. Maybe they're Rashard Robinson, who looked like he wasn't ready to go and, and was a fairly sought-after recruit, but was real skinny, and he was ready to go his freshman year. Maybe they're Kevin Tolliver, who was an all-world player and, and wasn't necessarily ready to go. Or maybe the guys you're looking at are Kevin Tolliver and maybe necessarily aren't ready to go. But J.B. and Tobiano... And Desmond Ricks are big-time, big-time, big-time corners that LSU is very much in the mix for. And those guys all of a sudden become pretty important. Because if I paint you a picture of a secondary that moving into the Florida State game next year is Radarius Jones, Seven Banks, Laterris Welsh, Greg Brooks, and Sage Ryan, that's, that's limited to be kind. Those guys have either been you know, three, four-star recruits or have you know played big downs, but that's a limited secondary. You start to bring in Makai Garner, JV and Taviano, Desmond Ricks, maybe Seven Banks comes back. All of a sudden, it starts to look better. And then, as you have to do this day and age in the transfer portal, you've got to look and see what's available. And 247 put out a list of the top 10 players in the transfer portal the best player they say that is in the transfer portal is Fentrell Cypress, a cornerback from Virginia. He's a grad transfer. He was a second team all ACC player this past fall. He led the ACC in pass breakups with 14. He started all nine games. Like he's a guy that people are looking for. And Steve Wiltfong says that Texas is a program to watch. Maybe LSU because they've got needs. Um, in the secondary, maybe Fentrell Cypress, the number one player in the transfer portal, is available to LSU. I'll tell you another player that's in the transfer portal that makes some sense for LSU, although I have no idea what any of these guys' plans are. J.Q. Hardaway is the number six player in the transfer portal, according to 247. Where's he come from? 
Cincinnati. Where was Mike Denbrock? Cincinnati. They may never have said a word to each other. I have no idea. But there's got to be at least a, a thought. Now, Luke Fickle moved from Cincinnati to Wisconsin. So, does he want to go to Wisconsin? Maybe. But this is an Under Armour All-American. Played 95 snaps. He only allowed three catches on the year. Again, I won't promise to give you an in-depth scouting report on J.Q. Hardaway from Cincinnati or Fentrell Cypress from Virginia. I've never seen either one of them play a single snap in football, period. But LSU's secondary becomes a real position of need. Now, you bring in Fentrell Cypress and Makai Garner comes back and you get Taviano and Ricks, and then all of a sudden uh, you let some depth be a factor for Radarius Jones and Seven Banks and Greg Brooks and, and Sage Ryan. All of a sudden, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about it. But in an era where teams are slinging it around, you got to have secondary guys. And, and I thought that Brian Kelly and his staff did a wonderful job of going to the transfer portal when the secondary was weak. Look, you had Dwight McLaughlin, move on. You had Eli Ricks, move on. That puts a massive hole in your secondary when if you were looking at this thing from a distance in 2020, you would have said in 2022, those are your top two corners. And they moved on. So Brian Kelly and his staff moved. They got Jarek Bernard Converse. They got Makai Garner. They got Seven Banks. They got Brooks and Fouché. They went and got players that were ready to play. But what happens when you go get players that are straight up ready to play? They graduate or they go to the NFL. It's just a different world of college football. But with McGee moving on, with Jay Ward saying he's gone, when you look at senior day and you see Makai Garner and Joe Fouché go through that, your numbers get very, very thin, very, very quickly. So that, to me, alongside you know, running back and maybe quarterback, depending on what happens, I mean, things change so quickly. I can't tell you who's in or who's out. But I know the state of this position right this second, and it's a question mark. And it's something as, as people that cover the program and as fans of LSU, we're so not accustomed to. Because every you know, Christian Fulton has a Derek Stingley, has an Eli Ricks. Like, it just, you just keep lining up the best corner in the country. Every Patrick Peterson has a Morris Claiborne and a Tyron Matthew and a Therald Simon, and it just, Tredavious White. I mean, it just, those are just in succession. So, I realize that um, I'm mainly talking about corner and Major Burns should be back, and that's a big help. But the secondary is a, a question mark for me, and it's just not a familiar spot here in Baton Rouge. So transfer portal is going to be key and closing these big-time corners in your signing class, Taviano and Ricks, is a big, big deal. And that's something that I'll I'll certainly keep my eyes on. And quite frankly, and we'll get into this in the second hour, at this point, if you're not in the playoff or maybe the New Year's Six and you're in the you – know, look, just a second ago – the announcement came down that Kentucky is going to be without its quarterback in the Music City Bowl. Will Levis, like, I'm out. And you're seeing that all over the country. And you're seeing coaches change and players change. It's quite frankly more important that you do well in the rec in recruiting in the early signing period in the transfer portal than it is that you win your damn bowl game. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. Bowl games used to be the big end to the season. And right now, I'm looking at the Cincinnati cornerback in the transfer portal more than I'm looking at Purdue scouting reports. That's just the facts. I don't know how you feel as a fan, what you're more locked in on, but it's kind of on to the next. And you used to not have to worry about any of this stuff until February when you got your signing class in. This was straight bowl time. Not anymore. 800 and something people in the transfer portal. Go fill your next team up. And that's the life of the uh, of the college football coach to this second. Got to go get secondary pieces right now.